Is it possible to make the perfect steak in an air fryer? Well, we recently tried and were less than pleased with the outcome. It just didn't have that perfect crust that we've come to expect from a great steak. Today, we're gonna try a couple different methods, so follow along as we turn up the tasty. <laughs> A couple weeks ago, we tried cooking steak in the air fryer for the very first time. We used the preset temperature guide on here, which was 370 degrees Fahrenheit, which I even thought was kind of an odd number. So today we're gonna try a couple of different things. First of all, we're gonna turn up the temperature as hot as this thing will get, which is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Also in our last video, we coated it with extra virgin olive oil. Today we're going to continue to use that, but we're also gonna try butter, which has a lower smoke point, which will hopefully create a better Maillard reaction. And then we're also just gonna have a plain steak, with no oil or butter on it. Today we're starting with two strip steaks just like we used in the last experiment, except I wanna be able to get these all on one shelf. I don't want one beneath the other. I'm trying to reduce variables as much as possible. As I've stated before, I am the Tesla of T-bones, the Edison of edibles. I don't know, does that seem right? I don't think that's what I meant. The M of meats. The Da Vinci of the meats, that's what I am. Today, we're gonna go back to the experiment. So, I'm gonna cook it three different ways, but there's only two steaks. They're big steaks, a little over an inch thick, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in half. Before I season these, I do wanna mention, I did salt these an hour ago. It's really best if you salt it the day before. We don't always have that great of meal planning around here, so these have been salted for at least an hour. All right, so now that we have these cut in half, let's get them seasoned. I think this has a smoke point at about 375. We use avocado oil because it has a very high smoke point and we don't want it to burn. In this case, I think a low smoke point might be better to help create that nice crust. So olive oil over here and right over here we have just a little bit of melted butter, okay? All right, so we got this thing set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna cook this for five minutes. Then we're gonna flip them over, cook another five minutes, take the temperature, flip them, cook another five minutes and see how they taste. That's my favorite part. All right, while this is cooking, I just wanna bring up one point that was made in the comments section of our last air fryer video. Someone said that they had their granite countertops crack because of the air and the heat that was hitting those countertops. So this particular air fryer vents out of the top, but out of a sense of absolute extreme caution, we did go ahead and put a cutting board underneath. If you've seen these videos before, I mean, I'm just an impatient guy. Well, the lady brisket uses the term meerkatting, where I just stare inside and just wait for this to be done. Right, it's been five minutes, time to flip. Well, nothing good looking about that crust right there. I can say that for sure. I mean, this doesn't even look as good as our last one. None of them do. Well, let's flip it over and let's give it another five minutes and then check the temperature. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Let's pull these out and see how they look. Frankly, not very good. Now, it should be noted that our last experiment went for 15 minutes. So we're at about 116, about 100 degrees in the one in the middle, and about 100 degrees over here as well. I don't know, we'll give it another three minutes, check the temperature, I mean, we don't wanna overcook the steaks. And frankly, this is one of the things I don't like about this method. You gotta stop the heating process to check the internal temperature. All right, so these steaks are done cooking. The interesting thing is, is that the butter reached a higher temperature faster than these other two. Our steak that had nothing on it was about eight degrees lower. So I'm gonna let these cool uh, for about five minutes. We'll cut in and see how they look. As you can see, none of these steaks look very good. Frankly, I think we got a better result on the last cook at the lower temperature. I've said it before on this channel, you should never cook to time only temperature. Why? Because there's so many variables that occur when cooking steak. But this, I mean, that does not look good. I'd call that closer to a medium well, if you will. I mean, no one likes to hear that word well and with their steaks being cooked. Same thing over here. I actually pulled this one out about two minutes earlier because when I checked the temp, it was at 137. So I'm sure that this has risen, probably another five, seven degrees. Let's see how it looks. 
Based upon looks alone, I think we've answered the question. I don't think it's possible to cook the perfect steak in an air fryer, but let's see how they taste. Gosh, it feels terrible having wasted money on these awesome steaks to cook them and have them look like this. I mean, it's just depressing. It tastes fine though. It's not dry. It's actually juicier than I expected it to be. You can really taste that salt, you know, coming through each and every bite. And that's what we figured out in another experiment. But on looks alone, I wouldn't want to eat this. On taste, it tastes great. You know, you're not getting the crust, but oddly, I don't feel like I'm missing it that much. You can see the fat did get the best color on all these steaks. I don't know, we might have to repeat it and use something with a lower smoke point. What do you guys think we should use? Have you made a perfect air fryer steak at home? Let us know how you did it in the comments below because we're clearly a little ways away from achieving our outcome. All right, so right here we have the one with the extra virgin olive oil. Very minor, if any, flavor differences between the first. It's not a huge impact, despite how this thing looks. You're not gonna win a steak competition with this color, no way. But it is surprisingly juicy. I'm really shocked at that. It is not a dry steak. And I've heard some chefs even say that crust and sear marks is overrated. Maybe I might agree with that on sear marks. I don't know about the crust. I really am missing that nice chew that you get. Over here, we have the one with the butter. And I mean, and theoretically, everything should taste better with butter and bacon. Let's see how it goes. The one thing that's sticking out to me on every bite is the salt end to end. And I think that really speaks to the power of salting ahead of time. Maybe picking up the slightest of butter flavor, but not much. We're doing this for you guys at home. That's why I'm doing it. I think we answered the question. Is it possible to cook the perfect steak in an air fryer? I don't think it is. I've tried this experiment twice now. Someone in our last video brought up where well, you could air fry it and then you could sear it, but it's like, yeah, if I'm gonna go through all that trouble, I might as well cook it in the pan to begin with and get that nice crust. Now, don't get me wrong, I like this air fryer. I've cooked chicken wings in it before, I've cooked a number of other things in it, and I've been really pleased with the outcome of those items, but sorry guys, I don't see this as the pathway to the perfect steak. But let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. Also, while you're there, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that big thumbs up like button or even better, subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that bell button so you get the notifications. We release a new video every week, at least one. Thanks for checking us out and stay tuned as we find new ways to, well, try to turn up the tasty. I'll see you guys soon.